Stop what, you might be asking. In today's podcast, I share some of the most valuable lessons I've learned over the years, and it includes stop doing this. Hello, friends. This is Lynn Schulte, and you are listening to the Birth Healing Summit podcast. We are here for meaningful conversations that will transform the way you work with pregnant and postpartum clients. Whether it is a new perspective, tool, or technique, you'll be able to implement it into your practice today. I invite you to sit back, listen with an open mind, and grab the golden nugget today's guest has to offer. Now let's get started. Welcome to this episode, everybody. I am kind of riled up today. It's because I want to share with you something that I am extremely passionate about. The title of this episode is called Please Stop. And I bet you're wondering what you what I want you to stop, right? Well, it started with a client that I saw today. Um, I spent an hour working on her because a therapist that she saw earlier forced her body to do something that it didn't want to do. And now she's in a lot of pain. So this person came in to see me and she had, um, um, she said that this session with this, this therapist, uh, caused some of her vertebrae in her back to, um, get messed up. And she saw a PT friend of hers after this session and the PT worked on those vertebrae, but also said that her pelvis was a little, um, off and she kind of helped her out, but didn't feel fully put back together again. So that's why she came in to see me. And, um, when, uh, this, my client told me that this therapist had used a tool on her um, body and she feels like that that's kind of what messed her up. And, um, and so when I, I, in standing, I did my, my scan on her and I got drawn to the right lower rib cage area. And then when she laid down, um, I was working on that lower rib cage area and could feel the diaphragm was kind of restricted. And then as I was assessing her thoracic spine, I could find the TL junction. There were two vertebrae there that just weren't happy and they weren't moving very well. And, and then as I started working with those, I was like, oh, that's right where the diaphragm attaches in. And the whole diaphragm was just not happy. And, and then I asked my client, I said, so did you have any difficulty breathing after that? that session, she goes, Oh, gosh, yeah, it was painful for me to take a deep breath. And I said, Well, now I understand why because your diaphragm really got affected. I think those the two vertebrae that the the therapist, um, you know, did some some created an issue in your body was where the that diaphragm attaches in. And so after releasing her diaphragm, then I went and did the diaphragm rebalancing with the pelvic diaphragm. And it's a technique that I teach in my advanced postpartum techniques online course. And as I was doing that, I felt that the the pelvis wasn't um, in its proper place. So I stopped doing the, the rebalancing wasn't appropriate because the pelvis wasn't balanced. So I worked on that and got that feeling much better. And then I went back, um, her pelvis needed the sacral scoop, which is another technique that I teach in the advanced postpartum techniques online course, which is actually, um, uh, we I just released it and through the month of July is having an early bird discount special on that course. So please check that out. Um, but I did the sacral scoop and then that really helped the pelvis get into a better position. Then I was able to then do the diaphragm rebalancing and just reconnecting the the respiratory diaphragm with the pelvic diaphragm. And um, then that felt really good. My my client got up and felt much better and more aligned and felt like everything was, um, you know, was better for her. So yay for her. But as I was working her, I, I had to say that I was just so disappointed in, I'm going to just say body workers in general for the way we have been taught how to approach the body. And I understand that we need to learn techniques. We need to understand how the body moves and everything, but really our approach, how we've been taught to work with the body is, you know, as a PT, I was taught to mobilize the joint in this way. And we got to get the motion moving this way. And, um, you know, massage therapists and, and PTs as well, there's tight muscles. we got to get them to relax. And that's our job is to, you know, get rid of the pain or get rid of the, the tightness in the tissues. 
And really what we're doing is, is in, in general, if the tissues aren't giving up and they're not relaxing easily, then we're fighting the body. And, um, you know, this, this, my client's therapist that she saw was using a tool. And if you're using a tool and you're not able to feel the response in the tissues through the tool, then maybe we shouldn't be using that tool. Um, because really our job as body workers, no matter what your profession is, is to listen to the response in the tissue. And a lot of times, I know we all can think of a situation where the tissue just didn't want to let go. The muscle wouldn't release. The joint wouldn't move. Well, I know what I learned in PT school was make it. <laughs> and a lot of us have been taught, you know, well, our job is to get rid of the pains and get the tissue to release. But what I invite us to think about instead is we need to get curious with what's that pain? What's that pain there for? What's the reason for the pain? And what's the reason that the tissue, whatever that tissue is, won't let go, won't release. And the reason I'm so riled up today is because I really wish that everybody who's doing body work or body work on bodies would understand that we should never, ever, ever force a release. And if you've taken one of my courses, you know that my number one rule that I teach and say it along with me if you have, taken one of my courses, but respect the tissues. I usually have everyone say it all out loud together again. So if you're listening in, please say it with me, respect the tissues. Why is this so important? Well, when we force a release, it usually doesn't go well as my client experienced in her session. So how do we know that we forced a release? Well, usually the client will come back in and their pain will have gotten worse after your session. When you make the tissues do something they didn't want to do, they complain louder. Um, and believe me, I get it. I used to do this early on in my practice when I didn't know any differently. And so I, I've had, you know, I've had experience with this happening. And I just want all of us to stop doing that. So can we, instead of forcing the tissues to release, can we instead get curious with things? And I always, you know, we, we are all treating on a very physical level. Um, we're treating the muscles, the tissues, the joints on a physical level. And if the pain or the tissues aren't releasing and things aren't changing, then I want to encourage you to do something different. If the pain got worse, then we know that we overdid it. If the tissues don't want to release, instead of offering more force, why don't we try getting curious with it instead? Because pain is usually a signal. Usually pain in the body might have a job to do. If a muscle is tight and it's not wanting to let go, there's usually a reason. What's the reason? This is where we as practitioners need to get to. We need to figure out the reason. The reason we never want the, the to force the tissues to do anything is because sometimes it has a job to do. We need to figure out what its job is. Sometimes pain could be being held in the body and it doesn't want to let go because if they let go of the pain, then they may have to face something that they don't want to face. If the tissues are tight, it may be trying to create safety and security in the body. And this is super, super important for us to remember for those of us that do intravaginal work. When we're working in this pelvic space, there's a lot that could be going on 
a lot held in this area. And dyspareunia, any pelvic floor muscle tissue tension held in that pelvic floor area, that perineum, that vaginal opening is all about safety and security. And if those muscles are tight, they may be protecting your client, trying to keep them safe. When I'm doing intravaginal work with my clients, I never, I always tell them, I'm like, I do not want to create pain. If you are having any pain, you need to let me know right away so that we can try to do something else. Let's, we want to avoid the pain. Please don't create pain when doing intravaginal work. This is not a case where no pain, no gain. And so remembering that those muscles are tight or they, this area is all about safety and security. And if we're working with tight pelvic floor muscles that don't want to let go, maybe there's a reason because the person isn't feeling safe. And maybe it was a, an event that happened in their childhood or earlier on in their life where they didn't feel safe, but the pelvic floor muscles don't realize that they're safe today. Maybe it's just getting curious and helping that person to feel the tension in their muscles. Maybe it's just a, helping them to become aware of, hey, do you feel this tension in the muscles? Can you let it go? Can these muscles relax? And if they can, maybe it's, if they can't, maybe they're still stuck in trying to protect themselves. So until your client learns how to feel safe and secure in her body, in her world, those muscles, while you may force them to release in your session because you're going to overpower them, they're most likely going to come back. Maybe there's emotion being held in that tissue. And if we can help identify the emotion, those tissues give up right away. So I really hope that if you are working with the pelvic floor muscles and doing intravaginal work, you probably realize all the tears that get shed on your table. And we need to become comfortable allowing our clients to be able to release those and let those tears flow. And if you don't feel comfortable crying yourself, your client may pick up on that and not feel like she has the space to go there and to release those herself. So it's super important as an internal intravaginal therapist that we be very, very comfortable with people crying on our table because that's going to be the most therapeutic benefit for them is to just let that emotion go, feel that emotion, I say 200%. The other thing we need to keep in mind is that if we force the pelvic floor muscles to release and our clients come back and the pain got worse, those pelvic floor muscles might be trying to hold those pelvic bones together if they're stuck in an open breathing pattern. When you bring the bones back to their original position, those muscles then can let go. Remember, that's the job. So tight muscles in the pelvic floor muscles, their job could be trying to create stability in that pelvic space. And if we force them to go, now that client is more unstable and their pain is going to get much worse. You bring the bones back together and then the muscles can relax. So please, instead of forcing the tissues, let's encourage the tissues, a gentle encouragement. If you're working on the tissues and encouragement isn't getting you anywhere, then I encourage you to bring your client's breath and awareness to the area. That should always be our first step. And just see what happens when you bring your client's breath and awareness to a tight muscle. Help them to become aware, especially if it's on one side and not the other side. You can say, can you feel how this muscle feels, the tight side? Can you feel the difference in this side? And what do you notice? What do you sense? And if they can really appreciate it, then you could just say, can we get the tight side to feel like the other side? Let's go into that tight side. What do you sense about that? What, what's, what's that tightness doing for you? Just get curious, see what comes up for them. 
when you're tuning into that tight side, you could really tune in and see what you sense about that tight tissue. Listen to that tissue. Do you sense an emotion in there? Do you sense something? Do you get an intuitive hit about why that muscle is tight? We need to learn to start listening to the body. You know, it's great that we have all this knowledge of our anatomy and physiology and of what the body is supposed to do, what the joints are supposed to do. But I find it a lot better if I let the body guide me instead of me saying, I need to do an AP, an anterior to posterior mobilization in this direction for five repetitions at this grade or whatever. That's me doing to the body. What I find way more effective is let me see, let me take this joint into maybe, let me see what the joint wants first. Sometimes the joint wants compression. Let me give it some compression. Let me engage the tissues of this joint. And then let's do a mild, let the, let the myofascial release happen. Let the tissues move and let the body guide me. When you engage the tissues and you follow the tissues, you see where the body wants to go versus you forcing it to do what you want it to do. It's a way more effective approach I have found. We need to understand that the body is meant to move easefully and gracefully. And when it's not, there's usually a reason. When you discover that reason, the tissues just melt and give up. I had a client, a pregnant client that I was working with who had a rib flare. So she was flaring her ribs to create space for babe, but we also helped to release her psoas muscle. And so her homework was to do her best in trying to stack her rib cage over her pelvis. So rib cage is in line with the ASISs. And after two or three days, I get a text from her and she's like, Lynn, this has taken every ounce of my willpower to make this happen. And I said, please stop. Don't worry about it anymore. You need another session. Let's dive in deeper. There's a reason your body doesn't want to go into that position. And so next session, we worked on it and there was a trauma response in her body. There was a, a protective mechanism of a <gasps> in her body that we released and she processed that and, and she figured out, it's like, oh, wait, I'm done. We released it. And then she stood up and she was able to like get into that position. No problem. There was no effort for her to go there. So if we are making our clients effort and, you know, force their body to do something it doesn't want to do, it's like banging their head against the wall to get rid of the headache. Our body's meant to be able to do it easily and gracefully. And so when you work respectfully with the tissues, you try to understand the reason for the pain or the tightness or figure out a way to help whatever the reason is, why it's there in the first place. When you get to that point, you'll find that the tissues just instantaneously give up. They, you'll feel the tissues melt in your hands and it, it restores that easeful, graceful motion that the body is meant to have in the first place. It's so beautiful. And it is so much fun. This is a really way more fun way to work with the body. So I just invite you, please always encourage the tissues, never force the tissues. And please remember my number one rule, respect the tissues. Please say it out loud with me again right now. Respect the tissues. I think I'm going to get t-shirts made or maybe signs that you can put up in your, your clinic so that you remember, or maybe just carry my voice in your head as you're working on your clients. So that as you're working on something, the tissues not wanting to release, you're going to hear my voice. Respect the tissues. Listen to your client's body. Let the body guide you. Encourage a release and respect the tissues. Thank you for listening today. And when we work in this way, we can help our clients have more beautiful and smoother births 
and faster recoveries. I'll see you all in the next episode. Today's podcast was brought to you by the Institute for Birth Healing. To discover more, visit instituteforbirthhealing.com. To claim $50 off of any online course, use coupon code PODCAST50 at checkout. Till next time, I'm Lynn Schulte, founder of the Institute for Birth Healing. 